everyone, it's Mithril and welcome back to my journey of learning to draw. So I passed my last actuarial exam. You may remember me going on hiatus last October to study for my exam and I recently got the pass result. Yay! Unfortunately, this also means that I have to start studying for the next one. But never fear because that means you can start hanging out with me on my daily study streams. Link below for my Twitch. Alrighty, into the art. So this video is going to be a progress report on my next five paintings in Evolve Artist Block 2. The instructions for all the paintings after a certain point is the same. Pick a subject, draw it the best you can using the proportional drawing techniques, and then do your best with painting it. I'd say the theme of this section has been problem solving. I ran into all sorts of problems that you can't really foresee until you're doing it. These assignments gave me the opportunity to run into problems, ask for help, and improve my tool belt so I'll never be confused about those particular things again. Then I can run into different problems and sidestep the stuff that gave me trouble in the past. It's been six months since starting Evolve and there's no more tracing, there's no more filling in colors. It's just me, my subject, and my tools creating something from nothing, which I think is such a step up from what I was able to do before. So my first few paintings were small because I made my drawings too small. Basically for the proportional siding technique, we chose a unit length that would be one and we compared everything else to it seeing how much longer or shorter it was than one. And we wrote these down on a quick sketch of the subject. Then we made a more refined drawing with proper proportion using this paper ruler, with one on the ruler being one from our diagram. This was fine for the drawings, of course, because no matter how big it is, if it's in proportion, it's in proportion. I started running into trouble with the paintings because based on the unit measurements that I was choosing, drawing it out at a one-to-one -one ratio onto the canvas was too small. But for some reason, my brain shut down and I was like, well, they didn't tell me explicitly that if my drawing was too small, then I could multiply all the measurements to find like a bigger version that was still in proportion. So I'm just gonna go one to one and then ask for help afterward. So then I submitted it and I said, help, my drawings are too small. And they said, oh yeah, why don't you just multiply them? And I'm like, I don't know, nobody told me I could. Uh, so then I solved that problem. I multiplied the measurements for homework 13 and I feel like it turned out really well. The wooden spatula was really intimidating because it was really long, it was at an angle and there weren't too many landmarks on it. However, I went over and refined the proportions so many times. Like with my first drawing, I made it as close as I could. Then I drew it again and I made it as close as I could. And then I went over with, with paint, still making sure to observe the subject and make sure I wasn't just following my drawing, but trying to paint what I saw. And in the end, I think the result was something that was pretty true to life and I'm really proud of. It did still end up being a bit small on the canvas, but I think it's an improvement from the first two. Another improvement in homework 13 was the smudging from the pencil marks. Within the lesson videos, Kevin recommended going over the canvas with like a paper towel to take off any excess graphite after you're done drawing it on the canvas. I tried that and it just smudged my entire canvas and it was very upsetting. Also, I was using this mechanical pencil and trying to erase the marks on the canvas using this eraser was such a struggle. It was just like pushing things along, it was tearing up the canvas, it was doing everything except giving me like a clean erase of the marks. And that was really surprising to me because this is actually a pretty good eraser whenever I'm erasing off paper. It just didn't work for this new use case I was trying to get it to work for. So then on homework 13, I decided, well, why don't I try something different since what I'm trying hasn't been working so far. So as I was doing the drawing, I was using my kneaded eraser to clean it up instead. And at the very end, instead of trying to smudge everything around at the paper towel, I sort of made like a roll out of my eraser and then just like rolled it over the surface of the canvas in order to pick up any excess graphite instead of like trying to move it like this and smudging everything. And this technique worked really well. It's been picking up so much graphite, it turned pretty much gray. It was like a really bright blue before I subjected it to this torture. Also, I don't know whether it's because the canvas is so rough and textured, 
but it was just like eating up my pencil lead. Like every few strokes, I had to like keep pumping out more lead and the more lead that got onto the canvas, the more messy it got. And for the first few paintings, like I had like a solid mass of gray along the side of my hand and there was just smudges all over the canvas and I couldn't get it off and whatever. <laughs> so then I figured out that if I take off extra graphite and extra marks as I go. Every few things that I add, I'll take away everything that doesn't belong there. I ended up with a much cleaner final result from that. I've been having a lot more fun with the paintings than when I was just doing the pure proportional drawings, but I also understand why I had to do the drawings in order to get to this point where I can do the drawing and the painting. I also see how learning to fill in the lights and the shadows first now allows me to see where the shadows are, how to portray them, whether they should be like a harsh sharp line or a gradient, and how to convey like a rounded surface, even if it's not that apparent in the subject or in a photograph. I was never able to do this before, so just seeing stuff and seeing where the shadows are and being able to portray that on the canvas just feels like magic. And I can only do that now because of the training that I got in block one. And now, since I've done like 20 paintings worth of light and shadow, I can easily add it to the end of a proportional drawing and boom, instant piece of art. So I realized after homework 13 that I could order the next Evolve Artist supply box. I'm not sure when exactly it unlocked, but it was like staring me in the face. I didn't want to order it too soon and have it sitting in the corner of my office for like months until I finish with block two, but I also didn't want to order it too late because, you know, I feel like I'd rather have it for a while than be done with block two and not be able to start on block three because I don't have the box yet. So after homework 14, I decided to just order it and see how long it takes for it to get here. So I ordered it on January 13th. I got the notification that I had shipped on January 21st and it arrived on January 25th. I have no idea if that's like a typical timeline to get the box, but I'd say probably leave at least two weeks for it to get to you if you don't want to be delayed. So for homework 14, their example still life was an apple and a pear on a box. And I thought two fruits in a box? I have two fruits in a box, but so I set up my little still life, but it didn't go as planned. For some reason, nothing was looking how I thought it was going to turn out. And I think that because I thought this was a relatively easy subject, I got too cocky and I stopped looking at the subject as much. I just filled it in with what I thought it would look like because they're pretty simple fruits and I sort of regressed back into symbolic drawing where I'm just like, it's a ball, I can paint a ball. And by the time I buckled down to really try to fix things, it was way too far into the painting process. And I figured I would just wrap it up and try harder next time. Unsurprisingly, I got the feedback back for this one that there was some warping in the shape of the fruits and it didn't exactly match the reference. So for homework 15, I was feeling a bit down because I didn't really feel happy with like three out of the four previous paintings that I had done. I wasn't feeling very confident about my skills in general, especially comparing myself to what I saw other people doing at the same point in the course. I thought that just because I made it to this part of Evolve Artists that I would be able to make the same level of paintings as everyone else. And I feel like I was really failing on that front and it was definitely getting me down. You can hear all about it on the live stream where I was starting the proportional drawing for homework 15. I'll leave a card somewhere up there. I was So anyway, I was having kind of a breakdown when I was trying to decide between painting this decision maker, this molecule, and this airplane puzzle. I felt like the decision maker was too easy and that I might fall into the same traps as last time, feeling overly confident with like an easy subject and not pushing myself to my full abilities. I was going to do the molecule until I put it into the shadow box and I realized that it's super shiny and they said not to do any shiny objects yet because that just makes things so much more complex. And so with the encouragement of everyone who was in Twitch chat at the time, I decided to go for the plane, which I wasn't feeling extremely confident on, but I figured I would give it a try. 
Because I was feeling so intimidated by it, I worked really hard with measuring out the proportions on this one. I made the diagram that had all the measurements, and then I drew it again. And this time I took even more measurements when I realized which measurements were helpful and which ones weren't when I was redrawing the diagram of the plane. Then with my new set of measurements, I then copied it onto the canvas. And because I'd already worked out so many of the kinks and taken really good measurements this time, it was a lot smoother of a process going from the diagram on to the final drawing on the canvas than the other ones, because I was still sort of like working things out on the fly for the earlier paintings. Overall, my brain was on 100% of the time while I was working on this painting, examining the plane, breaking down its connections to make sure things were accurate, maneuvering around my canvas and the chair to not disturb anything about the exact angle I was observing it from, going over it multiple times to make sure the proportions, angles, colors, blending, and everything was as perfect as I could make it. In the end, I feel a lot more satisfied with this one than some of my earlier paintings, which I sort of autopiloted through, and I think that the effort really shows through in the final piece. When I got my feedback back and I saw that it was perfect for the level of quality that they were expecting at this part of the course, I felt so relieved and proud because I really put in my maximum effort into this one. And my effort was rewarded with a beautiful piece of art and positive feedback. I feel like that's the biggest difference I've seen between Evolve and other art classes I've taken in the past. Because I have put in a lot of effort in the past, but I felt like that effort didn't get me anything. Either I didn't see myself improving, or the stuff that I was improving at was so boring that I felt like it would be an eternity before I ever made art. And I thought that for a subject like this, something that's so sort of technical and engineered that I would need to learn a lot more about perspective and construction in order to draw it. But I feel like it's getting proven to me over and over again that observation really is a tool that can be used to draw anything. Like if my eyes can be accurate enough, then no foreshortening or wonky perspective could trick it. With regard to choosing still life subjects, I've been getting really frustrated trying to find appropriate things to draw. I was about to buy this set of wooden dolls because they looked so cute and like they might be good still life subjects for me. But I talked to Kevin recently and he gave me some advice with regard to what stuff I should be painting to get through the rest of the block. And I just finished 16 on block two. Yeah, and, you, and your stuff looks great. Your stuff looks great. I saw the, uh, the remote control the other day. Really, really. And like I said to you, you know, when, when the instructor starts nitpicking the, the shape of one little button on the, on the remote control, you know that you're, you're nailing it. Right, so when when an instructor has a nitpick like that, you know you've got it. And so, just you've got four more paintings, and you're into color. And I just, really just, I, I, I'm going out of my mind trying to figure out what to paint. Like I told you, like my my, it's it's stressing me out because <laughs> like I don't know like what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I have this, but. Like, I don't see how I could possibly do this. It just seems way too hard. There's like a lot on here. Um, I don't know. I see people, like one of the example was like, do a like plant. I was like, I don't yes. understand how I could do plant. Uh, you know what? You think about how many measurements you'd have to use to break that down. I, I personally don't recommend that. It's the thing is, if you can, if you can measure two or three basic objects um, and get the proportions right, three three objects or 10 objects or 40 objects, it's the same exercise over and over. So it's just about getting a few things on the table and painting them. Look, you have tubes of paint. Use a tube of paint. A tube of paint, maybe, um, you know, the, a bottle of oil. Like, it doesn't have to be a complex subject. It can be simple as long as you're applying those measuring skills and then you make a painting out of it. It doesn't have to, you, a, a lot of the students, they overthink it and they overcomplicate it. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. It doesn't, you don't have to go crazy with this stuff. Like I oh say, pull stuff out of your kitchen. A spoon, a bowl. I mean, 
stuff you use every day. You don't have to compose beautiful paintings. All you have to do is use the skills. Measure, measure, measure. Paint your shadows, paint your lights, get gradients in. Right? That's all you're doing. So don't don't sweat what it is. Just make sure that you have things that have gradients and sharp edges and you know different values. But don't go too crazy. Even a single bottle of like of Coke, a single bottle of Coke on the table is enough. Managing the lights and the shadows on that, even the wrapper where part of it is in the light and part of it is in the shadows, that's a lot of work. So again, like I saw that one piece, you had like five things on the table. That's a that's like an insane amount of stuff to do. And we also talked about a former Evolve student who was looking to improve his manga skills and didn't get exactly what he wanted out of the course. And I took the opportunity to ask him, so what if I wanted to draw manga? Since that's kind of close to my art goals, how would I pivot from doing the realism that Evolve is teaching me and go into something stylized like that, go into imagination? I. I don't know. I, I feel like I have a hard time seeing that connection as well because I do feel like that's probably the most elusive part of art to me because everything else I'm just like, oh, I can see like, oh, if I, if I keep doing this, then I can do it better. And if I keep doing this, then I can do it better. But some parts of it, I don't understand. Like if I want this to be my finished product, like what's the first step toward that? It's like very fuzzy for me. So let me, uh, let me reframe the way you look at it. Imagine if whoever your favorite manga artist is did a drawing of a character for you and gave it to you and showed you where the break point between the shadows and the lights are right basically outlined what was a shadow and what was the light much like the transfer images we give you imagine if an artist made that drawing for you and then told you well use your evolved skills to fill in the shadows and lights and create a three-dimensional figure with your gradients just the way that Evolve taught you. Could you fill that that drawing in and bring it to life in grayscale? I will not have time to include all of that footage into this video, but I will be trying to include the most interesting pieces in some future videos. Also, please let me know what you would like to know from Kevin. I feel like I've improved so much in both my skills and my mindset that I can't ask the same kinds of questions anymore of him about learning art as a more beginner beginner than I am. So if you're skeptical or questioning anything about Evolve or the art learning process or anything related to that, please let me know and I will try to get you some answers. So yeah, I'll definitely be keeping Kevin's advice in mind when it comes to finding new subjects to get through block two and just focus on improving and applying my skills rather than trying to find super cool, impressive stuff to make beautiful art with. I need to remember what I'm here for and what I'm not. I was really intimidated going into homework 16 with the controller, but this time I tried to hold my hand over my eye instead of trying to close my other eye like this. And it was so much more comfortable doing it like this. I think I might try to find an eye patch or something for my future proportional drawings. I don't think I've ever seen an artist use an eye patch for when they're doing their drawings, but I felt so much more relaxed doing it this way. Like for the other drawings, I felt kind of rushed because my eye muscles were getting so sore holding my eye shut, so I had to go a bit faster so I can get it done before my muscles hurt too much to continue. But this time it was just really chill not having to use my muscles and like squeeze them and whatever. So this video turned out a lot longer than I was planning. Every time I finish a video, I always wonder if I'll have anything left to say for the next one. And I'm always shocked at how many ideas and thoughts I have bouncing around in my brain. Overall, homework 11 took three hours and 46 minutes. Homework 12 took two hours and 46 minutes. Homework 13 took three hours and 16 minutes. Homework 14 took 5 hours and 21 minutes. Homework 15 took 6 hours and 35 minutes. And homework 16 took 7 hours and 2 minutes. I hope that everyone has a great week. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to keep following along on my art journey. Stay safe out there and remember that talent is a myth. Now, get back to work.